Welcome back. Before we can get into the interview with CS Eugene Wamalwa, here's another story that we want to bring to your attention. The number of flood fatalities has risen to 219 countrywide. This, as floods continue to cause an extensive trail of destruction with the number of those displaced hitting 130,000 and the crop on 350 acres already destroyed. Dorcas Wangira reports. From up above, the extent of the damage of the floodwaters in Budalang is clearer. At least three quarters of the sub-county have been submerged and more than 44,000 people have been displaced. Houses, schools, churches and roads have been swept off by the deluge. The dikes built to contain the floods have also been destroyed. A delegation of national and county government officials that visited the area says a post-COVID intervention would be to construct dams in the western region. A landslide that occurred midnight Sunday in Gogueni village in Dia, Kirinyaga County, destroyed residents' homes. Over 500 stems of coffee and 200 tea bushes. Local leaders pleaded with residents living in the landslide prone areas to move to safer ground. The people who will be working there will not be very safe. So this one may be abandoned. And when some, some tea bushes have been abandoned. <laughs> In Mandera, Halalio, Hareri and Aresa are among the worst affected areas by the ravaging waters that have swept away crops worth millions of shillings and destroyed more than 30 water pumps. At Halalio Market, 34 families were displaced after their houses were submerged. At Hareri Irrigation Scheme, more than 2,000 acres of crops have been washed away, threatening the county's food security. There are also fears of an outbreak of waterborne diseases. Two people died after drowning at Neboi and two others at Suftu on the Ethiopian side after River Dawa burst its banks. The floods have also cut off key roads along River Dawa leading to Mandera town. Well wishes continue to distribute relief items to more than 300 displaced families in Tana River. Other families facing similar risk have been forced to demolish their houses to save building materials from being swept away. More than 17,000 people have since moved to camps owing to the floods in Tana River. The effect of the overflow of the Masinga Dam, an embankment dam on the Tana River, straddling the border of Embu in Machakos counties, is being felt by the residents. In Embu, more flooding has been experienced in Bondoni and Bere. Residents have been moved to Njeru Primary School. In Kwale, more flooding has been experienced in Vidziani village Msambwani. With the numbers of flood fatalities rising from 194 to 219 countrywide, the government is urging all Kenyans living near the rivers Nzoya, Nyando, Tana, and all other landslide and flood-prone areas to move to higher, safer ground as the rains continue. Dorcas Swangira, Citizen TV, Nairobi. Thank you, Dorcas. So as you can see, the heavy rains have caused problems. Now here's the thing, it's not just only Kenya. The heavy rains have triggered flooding and as well as landslides in the entire East Africa region. We're talking about Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Somalia, as well as Rwanda. And of course, flooding here in Kenya, zooming in closer, has affected more than three quarters of this country. To put it in perspective, that's about 36 out of 47 counties. Kenya Red Cross says at least 40,000 people have been rendered homeless after Bag and Zoya, River and Zoya rather, burst eight banks over the weekend. That was on the weekend of 2nd May, the, big, the first weekend of this month. On top of that, Kenya Red Cross says that since the early rains began in March, not just yesterday, early March, we have seen so far 233,000 people 
having been affected, including 116,000 of them displaced. This is way as early as March, not just yesterday with the rains. And this most, the most affected countries we have, counties rather, that we have in the country, we're talking about the likes of Nzoya, Kisumu, Siaya, Busia, Migori, and Nyanza, just to mention a few. But apart from that, farmers in arid and semi-arid regions are still recovering from the locust of 2019 according to the world health according to UN rather the second batch of uh, locusts is said to be 20 times bigger joining us right now is the CS of devolution arid and semi-arid lands CS Eugene Wamalwa CS thank you so much for taking time to speak to us here on Citizen TV a lot on your plate I must say what are the top three priorities that your ministry has during this season uh, thank you very much uh, during this season the most immediate and urgent issue is to bring relief to the families affected. As uh, you have rightly uh, informed Kenyans, we have had heavy rains right from March. It's our normal long rain season. Mm -hmm. And we have had families displaced. We have uh, people who have lost uh, their lives. Mm -hmm. But uh, those who are in camps in different counties, first of all, need food. So number one priority is to get them food and ensure they have enough food in the camps. Yes. Secondly, they need water, clean mm -hmm. drinking water. Mm -hmm. And we are working closely through our Ministry of Water with our county government mm -hmm. to ensure their water trucks taking clean, fresh water to the families. Okay. Thirdly, because of the COVID problem also, we are through Ngao, uh, our county commissioners, giving them masks and sanitizers to ensure that even as we distribute the food, we abide by the uh, Ministry of Health guidelines mm -hmm. so that we avoid uh, uh, the, the people in the camps being exposed uh, to the coronavirus. Okay. Sadly, so uh, they also need uh, 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 sanitizers, uh, they need uh, uh, mosquito nets. So what we are looking at now is relief and evacuation by the families from uh, the, the, the way of harm so that we are able to bring them to safer places Mm. Fortunately, our schools are closed, so we've been able to move most of these families into schools and we are supporting them with the help of the county mm -hmm. governments, with the help of uh, uh, Red Cross and our partners like UNICEF. We are working very, very closely to ensure that we take care of these affected families. Right. CS, how fast is the emergency response team on the ground? How effective are they? What's hindering any form of effective response on the ground? Actually, we, the, the response has been very good and uh, very well coordinated. As you know, we already have uh, uh, county emergency response teams mm -hmm. uh, co-chaired by our governors and our county commissioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have had a lot of uh, support from also the private sector and well-wishers who are coming in to support the affected families. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to assure Kenyans that uh, it will only be for a period. We are very certain, as uh, our experts had predicted, that the long rains will start in March. They would end uh, in uh, May in some areas. Yes. We extend into June. Mm -hmm. So beginning July, we should uh, have the rain subside. In certain areas, the rains are already subsiding, but uh, we want to uh, continue with the support until July when uh, the rain subside. So our planning is uh, for this period, but also post. Uh, the flood period, we will also need to uh, rehabilitate these families so that lives can go on. Our infrastructure has been damaged in many mm -hmm. areas. Our bridges have been washed away, roads cut off. So there will be the recovery uh, phase where we now fix the infrastructure, help the families uh, resettle, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, restore our irrigation and uh, water infrastructure. Right. That, uh, has been damaged. I was in Budalangi. The entire Bunyala irrigation scheme is uh, underwater. And we're talking of millions of uh, rice uh, that has been lost. And we're also looking at Mwea. We are looking at uh, Ahero, uh, West Kano, Southwest Kano. All these uh, irrigation uh, areas have been affected. And we will need to go into the phase of uh, uh, rehabilitation and also helping those farmers affected get back to uh, their, 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 their lives. But long term, right. we want to, and this is what we were telling leaders yesterday with our governors, so, that we must allow government projects mm -hmm. to actually proceed. Mm -hmm. The building of dikes and dams must be uh, given priority. Mm -hmm. And in Western particular, we're asking people who have been uh, uh, hesitant in giving their land 
mm -hmm. that now is the time to build right. those lands, to allow them to be constructed and dikes so that we, we put this thing of flooding behind us. So, so CS, at the end of the day, budget reading is in just a few weeks. What economic proposal have you tabled to your tani for arid and semi-arid farmers who have been immensely affected by the drought from last year, have now been affected by the locusts who are also coming now for round two? Here's the thing. Um, development of the arid and semi-arid lands is going to be one of the big winners in this uh, budget reading. In 2019-2020, you allocated $4.9 billion. In 2020-2021, um, $7.3 billion to the development of the arid and semi-arid lands. As the CS of the um, um, arid and semi-arid lands, what economic packaging, what economic proposal have you set out to your tani to cushion your farmers? Actually, for, for uh, the axal areas, already uh, the biggest problem has been uh, drought. As you know, uh, these uh, the areas where... Uh, they receive very unreliable rainfall. Yes, and, yes. Uh, through NDMA, we have already put in place a fund mm -hmm. of over two billion that will be helping in terms of building resilience in these counties, uh, getting uh, uh, boreholes, getting water ponds uh, constructed. But uh, apart from uh, uh, the limited uh, uh, amount that uh, we will receive uh, through the budget, we have already initiated bigger strategies for the northern uh, regions mm -hmm. and uh, we want to thank his excellency the president uh, because this is an initiative that he led himself with uh, with the world bank and we have over 120 billion mm -hmm. that has been uh, dedicated purely for uh, the northern kenya it is for, called specifically the for northern uh, kenya project and this is the, for northern kenya it's the northern and northeastern a uh, development initiative. It's a World Bank initiative mm. that will see us uh, improve the access to water for the residents. Mm -hmm. We'll see us uh, improve the infrastructure, uh, the roads, uh, electricity. We are looking at uh, uh, issues of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And all this is a package. So we, we have a big plan as a, as a government for the people of northern Kenya. Because we also realized that uh, historically uh, they were left behind in terms of development. And therefore, it is time that we now look at how we can tap into this potential. Because there's huge potential in northern Kenya. In these Asal uh, counties, that is where the biggest potential is in terms of food security. We can actually double production in these areas. And so, CS, we you are can confirm. About the Ukambani area. So, CS, you can confirm to us that in your planning and with the financial yes. year uh, budget reading just a few weeks away, CS, you can confirm to us that you have factored in flooding of counties, um, the drought in the next financial year, that we will not find ourselves come 20, come 2021 in another um, natural disaster looking for funding. You have factored that for the next financial year. The, the, the planning is already in place. As I have said, it has been a problem of uh, people politicizing government projects. And yesterday in uh, Busia, with the chair of the Lake Region Economic Bloc, Governor of Paranya, who is also the chairman of COG, we agreed that we are going to call uh, for a meeting, bringing together all the Lake Region uh, counties, about 14 of them, because they're the hardest hit by these floods. The worst areas hit are Budalangi, with over 44,000 people uh, affected. Mm. And in Nyando, uh, that Kisumu area is the hardest hit. So we're going to have a meeting to say, in this region, we have a plan as government to end this flooding menace. We so, need to build the sowing coru dam mm -hmm. to tame River Nyando so that we never see floods again in Ahero, in, uh, 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 in the Kano Plains. In mm. the western, uh, there was a proposal of three dams along River Zoya and uh, uh, one in Tongaren, one in uh, Webuye and Abuyole area, one in Lugari. These dams alone will hold the water upstream. We will not see the flooding in uh, Budalangi. See, yes, I agree with you. I agree with you on that front. Uh, the but Zoya irrigation project, uh, uh, you, you asked me about how much we have set aside. Yes. We have five billion already. The money is already there. Mm -hmm. The contractor is on site. All we need are the people to move. And this, this is what we are saying, that the law gives us the power to compulsorily uh, acquire this land. And we are now asking the people who have been moved by the water, they do not have to go back. We want to compensate them, give them money. We will not move them without compensation. So that as the rain subsides, 
We want the permanent dikes built in Budaland. You will never hear of floods again. Even the last few years, the temporary dikes that we built are the ones that have been holding. But because of the heavy rains and the backflow from the lake, the pressure was too much on the dikes, they broke. That is why you are seeing Budalangi back in the news because of floods. The last uh, seven or so years, Budalangi was not being flooded. Meaning, if we have those permanent dikes built, next year you will not hear of this flood. So allow government projects to proceed. Let us not politicize them. Let us give the land and move and give way. This, position, this problem can go away. Okay, so CS, lastly, then what is your long-term solution? Because flooding and the drought, we see it year in, year out, year in, year out. Leadership changes. What is going to be the long-term solution for Kenya's flooding? For drought, we have already the policy and institutional framework through the NDMA, and you'll be seeing us building dams already. The president had directed three dams constructed in the West Pokot, in Turkana, and Masabit. We have more dams coming and NDMA and the Navy project, we will be able to deal with the issue of uh, drought effectively. But when it comes to other disasters, uh, the flooding, the rain, as we speak, we are already putting in place the disaster risk management policy and bill, and uh, this is going to strengthen the response, uh, the institutional uh, framework to deal with floods, so that all levels of government, from the national to the county, we are able to improve on our response. That's all we need to do. And also in terms of uh, 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 implementing the long-term plans, the dams in Tuake, we are already going to control the flooding in Ukambani and turn Ukambani into a new breadbasket. Already in Mwea, we have timber dam that's ongoing that will double rice production in, uh, in, 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 in Mwea. Now for Loan Zoya in Budalangi, and this is what I was uh, telling the people yesterday, once we implement this, once we have permanent dikes there, you'll not hear of this flooding again. And uh, the third and last is the Soin Koru Dam. Because Kisumu County is, uh, apart from Budalangi, the Nyando area is the hardest hit. River uh, Nyando can be tamed. So please allow us to uh, build this dam in Koru. And we are not going to ask. I think time has come now as government for us to implement forcefully within the force of the law to ensure that this is done. And mm -hmm. that's a thing of the past. All right. Thank you so much, CS. That's CS, uh, Cabinet Secretary of Thank Devolution, Arid and Semi Arid Lands. There, CS Eugene Wamal was speaking to us about his game plan with the flooding that we're seeing across the country, and of course, also the plan with Arid and Semi Arid farmers who are still recovering from the 2019 locust.